On a Sunday morning, courtesy of Colourful and myself, Ms. Gracie. You're listening to Joe Negro and the Sunburst Band every day. Okay, taking us up to the nine o'clock hour. I can't believe that an hour has gone already. Time just flies when you're having fun. But taking us up to the uh, nine o'clock news, just a little snippet of the brand new heavies. Don't let it go to your head. When I started to present on Colourful, it's quite nerve-wracking because there's so many buttons, so many things to think about. Press this button, fade that button up, you know, is the presenter like up or down and the listener's going to hear me shuffling around. So it's quite nerve-wracking, but I'd say within about a month, I started to get used to it and got more comfortable and if I made a mistake, I'd make a joke of it because in the initial stages, I was very conscious of the listeners listen and probably critiquing me but once I got comfortable if I made a mistake I'd make a joke and say ah oh, did you uh, you know did you hear that uh, deliberate mistake that I made and I just feel when I'm presenting I'm having a conversation with the listener so it's me just sitting in a room with them playing good music and I find that's an easier way for me to operate rather than get scared about what I'm doing and I love it I love good music I love sharing good music with people and yeah just makes me happy as the saying goes you know music makes you happy or I've just made that up I think <laughs> yeah I did a, I, I've always loved to write and so I did um, a system journalism course that took a group of people who never done any sort of journalism before so it's a six week intensive course um, there's a guy called Mark Wadsworth and I think it was called system journalism I can't remember the full name mine I see and yeah, it was an intense course and we learned how to, to write and how to interview people. And then also at Roehampton University, I've done a series of short workshops learning interview skills, creative writing. And I think all of that adds to what I do, you know, because sometimes I don't feel 100% qualified. So I always like to get out there and just learn new skills and it just helps you grow as well. So it's fun. I love to learn and it's, it's all good. But I am actually qualified to do what I do. Because I do it, it doesn't feel like a big deal. But then I think, actually, yeah, I love music. I go to lots of concerts. I buy lots of music. Um, I've done some media training. And I love to talk. So being a presenter and playing music and writing, occasionally I will write um, reviews of concerts that I've gone to. And so all of it does fit together. Sometimes I take a step back and think, yeah, you are qualified. So I take it back about not feeling that, you know, I was qualified to do what I'm doing. And musically, I tend to like jazz and soul artists. So you would not see me at a rock concert, a rock or a grunge concert. <laughs> I would, I'd be the opposite way. And I love quality quality vocals and seeing a live band. If I know there's a show and it's going to be a PA system with a singer just holding a mic, I'm not going to go. But if it's a concert with a trombonist, a guitar player, a drummer, the whole kind of, not an orchestra, but obviously a whole band, I'm in my element. And if the singer is great, that always helps as well. You know, I've been spoiled. You know, I was a teen when I was, I grew up listening to music so people like Luther Vandross, Tina Marie, um, you know they were some of my most favourite artists so now sometimes when I hear some of the younger artists I'm not so impressed but you know old school artists those are ones people like the Whispers, the SOS bands you know and lately you know I'm in love with the voice of Gregory Porter he's a jazz musician but he just his voice paints a story so when you listen you can just picture the story that he's telling his voice is beautiful so that's Gregory Porter whose voice I'm loving and then there's another guy um, called Jose James he's a young guy based in Brooklyn and he's kind of 
He's got a kind of a hip hop swagger to him, but he's soulful and he's jazzy and he's another artist that I'm, I'm loving as well. And then vocally, I love her, Layla Hathaway, Rochelle Farrell, Anita Baker, uh, Liz Wright, all of them different voices but all beautiful and also Diane Reeves so whenever any of those people are on tour in London I'm there usually near the front there's no point in going to a concert and being stuck at the back so I get there and I'm near the front if I'm not at the front I'm not happy. So I went to primary school which was two minutes from my house and then I went to Gorringe Park Middle School which was about a 15 minute walk from my house then I went to Tamworth Manor which was in Mitcham and that was a 40 minute walk to school. Um, I was quite academic but not a brain box and I did A levels. I love maths so and I loved, well I liked physics, I can't say I loved physics so I did A level maths, physics and I forgot what else I did and then I went to university and did a business degree but before I went to university I actually worked for a few years but got fed up with working, decided I wanted to improve my prospects and went and did a business degree and uh, yeah that was it. Okay so my parents are from Ghana, uh, West Africa and they came to London individually. My mum came to study to be a secretary and my dad came to study to be an architect and they met in London and I was born in London, actually in West London, Hammersmith but from the age of five moved to South London so I identify myself more as a South Londoner than a West Londoner so that's the thing. Who do I think I sound like when I sing? Um, I don't know because when I used to mess around singing I would try and take on the persona of the person I was singing like so yeah I don't know I'd have to sing but I'm not going to sing on camera for you to say who I sound like. Um, I did singing lessons when I was about, I think, I don't know, early to late teens, I did singing lessons. Um, I was actually meant to do the singing lessons with my cousin who wanted to become a singer, but she found a boyfriend, so I, I shouldn't say it on camera. So her parents thought she went to singing lessons, but she didn't, she went to sing her boyfriend. But I actually went to do singing lessons because for fun we used to sing together, nothing live, but just messing around at home recording our voices um, and it was fun it gave me a high but I was very shy to actually perform and take it further so at the end of the course we would do a showcase event and some of the people in the class would say you know Grace you should really go and do it but I was just too shy and, and singing it's very you're giving yourself so for me to kind of put myself out there and do what I think is great and someone to criticize it I don't think I could take that. I don't think I don't have the, the I don't have thick skin. So I like to sing at home in the bath and around the house, but in terms of getting out there and trying to be a recording artist, I just want to play the music. I yeah. You know, I'd like to, but the thing is the people I want to sound like, I don't sound like so I'd love to sound like Anita Baker, I'd love to sound like Tina Marie, and I don't, so I'm like, well, I won't bother them. <laughs> But I think with anything, it, it's it's networking, meeting the right people. So if you're wanting to get into radio, if you're wanting to get into music, it's networking. You've got social media, so physical networking, as in going to events and meetings to talk to people. And then also you've got social media, Twitter, Facebook, connecting with people. You know, there's always someone that knows someone, you know, and if you've got a passion when you meet those people, that passion should show through. So it's it's meeting people, talking to people, and that's that's the way that I think you can get ahead in, in whatever you want to pursue. The ways that you can get in touch, it definitely makes my day. So, you know give me a call, you can text or you can email. And also, if you've got a friend that loves good music but doesn't yet know about Colourful, do pass the message on. Tell a friend to tell a friend to listen to Colourful. We're on DAB radio, we're also on the internet. You can listen to us on your iPhones, your iPads, any type of um, <laughs> device you can listen to us, so there's no excuse. Colourful Breakfast with Ms Gracie, here every Sunday between 8 and 11 o'clock 
on a Sunday morning alongside Knee Deep. So thank you everyone for listening and we will be back, or I will be back definitely, and I'm sure Knee Deep will be back with me next week. Enjoy your sunshine, whatever you do. See you next week. Bye. Ms. Gracie, here every Sunday between 8 and 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning alongside Knee Deep. So thank you everyone for listening and we will be back.